Logan Boyle, and I'm quitting alcohol. I'm so fucked today. I've got to catch the 6 a.m. flight out of Melbourne back to Sydney, but I'm leaving from Avalon Airport. There's two fucking airports in Melbourne, Tullamarine and Avalon. Tullamarine is about half an hour from where I am now. Avalon is about an hour and 20 away. So that makes it too expensive to catch a fucking Uber out there. Costs like $150 to get out there in an Uber. So I have to catch a bus out there and the bus leaves at 4am. It leaves at 4am, which means I have to be there before 4am. Which means I have to leave the fucking house at 3am, walk all the way down to the bus stop, which is like a 40 minute walk from where I am. Catch the fucking bus, then an hour and like fucking 20 on the bus out there, then fucking on the flight at 6. It's gonna fucking suck. But this flight costs $44, so it's worth missing a night's sleep for fucking 44 I'm fucking looking forward to going home as well. I've stared into the abyss enough. Comedy really is staring into the abyss. It steals a little part of your soul every time you fucking do it. I don't know how these fucking comedians, <laughs> like, live. Like, I have a wife and a family and shit. So, like, after comedy, I can go back to my wife and family and things are normal. It's a normal life. Like, it keeps you sane. Like, <laughs> like I, don't, I don't know what keeps these fucking comedians sane. These bachelor fucking cunts. I suppose the free time and the pussy probably helps. That probably doesn't hurt. But comedy is like so mentally and spiritually and emotionally shattering that for me anyway, I need that fucking normal life outside of comedy. If I didn't have that, I would be so fucking mentally ill. Like uh, pretty much every single comedian I've run into this week. I had forgotten how mentally ill comedians are, but fucking the comedy festival brings it right out. If you want to see, like, overt mental illness, just try and talk to a comedian, like, half an hour before their show starts. They'll just look fucking straight through you like you're a ghost and like they're a ghost. But it's been a good week. I've done fucking heaps of gigs. Done a lot of long sets. Done some good crowds. Tonight was the best night I've done in I can't even remember how fucking long. It was a fucking packed house at Kings of Comedy tonight and I had probably the best set I've had in like fucking two years. I fucking crushed it and I needed that. That's where my comedy festival show is happening as well. So it was good to get that one under the belt because the night before I did a fucking gig at a fucking burlesque bar and there was a comedy show at the end. So all the people that were there for burlesque... <laughs> <laughs> rolled over into the comedy show. So there was a lot of old cunts. There's a lot of fucking disinterested cunts. And the burlesque crowd isn't necessarily the best crowd for fucking comedy. Anyway, I fucking went on at the end of the night and I did like 15 minutes to... Were they excited? I wouldn't say they were excited. Were they happy to see me? Did they enjoy my material? I would say not 100% on board, no. The burlesque crowd is, it's not the best crowd. So you do a gig like that. Every other gig since I've been here, I've done fucking great. It's been fucking fun. It's been great. But the rough one at the burlesque, even though there's excuses, <laughs> of course there's excuses, it's fucking burlesque crowd. It still shook the confidence a little bit. And instead of going back to like my wife and my kids and getting that like opportunity to put things in perspective, the world doesn't revolve around my comedy. So instead of that, I came back to fucking John Dawes shithole and sat on his shitty couch and let my fucking mental illness run riot. <laughs> it did. I was fucking depressed after the burlesque for some reason. But then tonight it all fucking clicked from the first word. The first thing that I said when I got on stage got like a fucking like 30 second laughter pause. Anyway, the good feeling from that gig lasted about 15 minutes. And now I'm just back on the couch depressed again. 
I think I might have a little bit of depression at the moment. I think it has a lot to do with my environment for the last week. Just looking around this studio apartment, there's like a cooking pot with a fork in it next to Dawes bed. There's a red wine glass with some red wine in it, but about 14 cigarette butts in it. A half empty bottle of Tabasco. This is all next to his bed. There's a pizza box on the floor. There's a dollar. Like, it's definitely the environment I'm in. It's rubbing off. It's going to be good to get back home, but I'm not looking forward to this 3 a.m. walk to the fucking bus station. Anyway, that'll do for tonight. I've got to fucking leave soon. So, yeah, if you're enjoying the podcast, share it around. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you the fuck later.